So, up to the first, and uh, John Rimes just ordered into the, what, second or maybe even third cut of rough here. Doesn't look too long, though. Yeah, it's probably better, actually, there. He can get under the ball, which is what, just, you know, he needs to be careful. He doesn't come up short, obviously, but he will be aggressive, so he'll try and hit this high very hard. Try and get a bit of spin. Yeah, brave. And there you just see that release. But he's on the right level, more importantly. John Rahm has drifted over the back. He's not going to chip it, Mark. He's got the putter out. Yeah, it's really it, it's difficult to know on a gradual uh, sort of mound where to pitch the ball. And if you get it wrong, you're way out. So this is maybe a good play, but it's just a difficult shot. See how hard he's having to hit that. We had a good wander, didn't we, the other day, Mark? Get in, you can go. Oh, that'll do. Not quite sure what came out there, but that was certainly disappeared. Not quite as difficult as I thought. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, birdie at the second for John Rahm, and he is up and running. Nine under par, now four behind. This is definitely a birdie hole, this blind fifth. Oh, He really goes all out, doesn't he? He's, he's such an attacking player. John Ram on the seventh now. It is 32 yards on, wide from the left. Oh, that was played to perfection. From the right hand drop to get that control, that was exceptional. Rambo. Coming to the end of his opening nine. Oh, what a shot. So a little bit tentative with his birdie putt on the previous green on the eighth. John Rahm to get to 11 under. And he needs to start making birdies with Cabrera Bayo setting quite a pace at the top. This is a birdie fest today, isn't it? Absolutely fantastic. What do you reckon, Anthony? Yes, I could see, uh, well, 15's leading at the moment. Be interesting to see what Rafa Cabrera Bayo does. To Ram at 10. To try and hold this one up. A little bit of a fade if he can off the upslope to get to this pin. Yeah, that's a good shot. Well controlled. He's hanging around. He's four behind. Not too many birdies on this 10th hole. John Rahm's got a chance, though. Yeah, almost dead straight. Can go firm at this one. There you go. You might just see a back nine. Remembering from John Rahm. Four birdies in his last six holes. Off he goes to 11, the par three, and we'll go to the par first of the par fives, the 12th and Rahm wraps itself around the coast here, or the river inlet. Right. That was in. Yeah. Oh, he's found the fairway, John Rahm. Beautiful tee shot for John Rahm. He can get there even though he's a little bit of wind in too. It's a bit interesting to see. Get anywhere near this pin, it'll be John Rahm on the front needs to thread it through oh that's a golf shot that is a beautiful golf shot from the Spaniard this is going to be a great back nine pretty flat putt got a flat part of the green at 12 chances watch well. out <laughs> well what a run this is for John Rahm Three birdies in five holes to the turn, another one on number 10, now the eagle at 12, and Ram all of a sudden one behind his fellow Spaniard. Some venom behind that one from John Ram at 14.
it's just 121, big long wedge. Beautiful shot, a little bit unlucky there, with another spin. Big putt for Ram. The outright lead, and he's got it! Eagle at 12, bogey at the short par 4, 13. Big shot in here though, 5 iron. Oh, look at this, look at this from John Ram! Oh, inches away from an Eagle 2. He is on a roll. It's a different class, isn't it? Come at the hour, but he really is a superstar now in world golf. Seven birdies and an eagle on the card today for John Rahm. He is seven under for his round. And he leads by one as he heads off to the par 3 16th. Here's Ram at 17. With driver trying to hammer this down the right hand side. Pin back right, give him a really good look at the flag. Big wide fairway. Does camber just a little bit to the right. No wind at all, just like when he won at Port Stewart. Port Stewart? Yes. Port Stewart. Similar conditions and getting the bounce there. He's going to set the target, I think, Ram. It'll just be whether or not the others can match it. Nice pin for Ram. Fade it in. Very comfortable doing that with that action. It's a good solid shot, but. Hard to get it within that three or four foot range. He managed it a couple of holes ago, but that was a fine shot. <laughs> Ram pounces again. After the drop shot at 13, he's come back with three birdies in four holes. He's got the par 5 18th to come and he leads by two. Can he finish in style? Needs to get this fairway. Oh, that was a... Ooh, well, he's hung on to it. Oh, it's not too bad. <laughs> John Rahm, meanwhile, at 18 with a par putt. And it could well be the putt. That secures him his second Dubai duty-free Irish Open win. It's an eight under par 62 for John Rahm on Sunday here at the Hitch. Will it be enough to win him the Waterford Crystal Trophy again? Super back nine, the Eagle at 12. Little shot to make a bogey time at 13. Then the three birdies in four holes. Super under the ball. Ram, John Ram goes on the Waterford Crystal Trophy for the second time in three years. And he continues his rise and rise in the game of golf. John, you went into the weekend seven shots behind. You just shot 64-62 to win your second Irish Open in three years. Just describe your emotions for me. <laughs> I mean, I keep saying 
I love this tournament. I love this country. I love the people, and I feel like I'm at home every time I come. Uh, my, my game was in great form. It just didn't show the first two days. I couldn't hold the putts, and and the weekend it was the complete opposite. You know, Put, putts started rolling in from everywhere. Uh, I felt really confident, and I knew I could do something. I knew I had to do it today to have a chance. And man, uh, I kept looking at the leaderboard and, and looking up and. After 10, I'm like, okay, let's, let's get a good run, and that eagle on 12 just completely got me going. Uh, you know, it, uh, even though I had the little mistake on, on 13, I just knew that uh, my target number was 15 under. I knew 15 under was going to have a strong chance, and I thought I was going to shoot 16 under without birdieing uh, 18. So, definitely thrilled with the bag nine I had. I mean, me and Adam did a lot of good work on the weekend uh, to polish the mistakes of the first few days, and. Just very excited to to repeat. You know, I know I think Sebi was the only Spanish player to to ever do it more than once. So to join to join my name to that cup again, it's uh, it's special. You know, it's probably one of my favorite trophies that I have at home, and to have another one, it's uh, it's definitely special, a special moment. I don't know how to explain it. Started the day five behind, as you say, got out in 31 within one, and you say the eagle at 12 was the turning point. Just describe what goes through your body, what goes through your mind as you're making birdie after birdie, eagle after eagle, in front of that crowd who are so vocal and so supportive of you. It just feeds into it. It helps. Uh, it, I was just, you know, with my eyes, uh, with my sight forward, uh, I always like to feel like I'm one shot back. And when I made that eagle on 12, I was one shot back. And uh, little did I know that the leaders were making bogeys, and uh, maybe I made a, a small mistake on 13, made it a little bit too aggressive. But uh, when I got to 14 green, I was tied for the lead. I didn't expect that. And uh, the crowd was just being tremendous. Even on the walk from 13 to 14 tee, they were being tremendous. You know, when I got to a tee, I was right back in it. Just that, that did help a lot. And making that birdie on, on 14, thanks to, I mean, staying a little more patient and focused on the shot and, and believing that I'm only one back, right? And uh, and uh, you know, I got the little surprise that was that I was tied for lead. I was uh, I was part of the leaders, and I thought, well, let's separate ourselves. The final major of the year is just over a week away. You're headed into the links at Portrush, having got acclimatized the links, having got this huge boost to your confidence. How excited about the possibilities there? Well, I'm excited because it's going to be still. Well, it is Northern Ireland. There's going to be a lot of Irish crowd out there. Uh, good memories, you know. Port Stewart wasn't too far away, so I'm going to go to uh, to the town of Portrush. And uh, with a lot of good memories, a lot of good vibes, uh, I know I'm going to have a huge support from the crowd, and uh, hopefully, I can just keep my good golf going in Ireland. Uh, I really can't wait to go to Port Rush and uh, visit the Harbour Bistro, like I did every single night when I was playing there. And uh, I'm sure I'll see a lot of people there again, and uh, you know, just enjoy the town, enjoy the week, and hopefully, you know, play play the best Open I've played so far. Many, many congratulations! Fabulous golf. Thank you very much. To watch another European Tour video, click here or to subscribe, click here.